Hello, hello, it's Letra Snow, and you may have seen a few frog videos on my channel by now. And a couple of years ago, I did one showing my entire collection, and at the time, I think I had 23 frogs, I think that's the title. Um, a hell of a lot has changed since that video, so I am going to be going through and showing you everything that I've done since then. Say, we've definitely not got 23 anymore, that number's pretty much doubled. I think I'm at nearly 50 at last count. <laughs> and... All of my terrariums before used to be quite minimalistic with just having fake plants so they were easy to clean and everything like that. And my plant addiction got going more. So this is 50 frogs and 500 plus plants. Yeah, that's not clickbait. As you can see with that montage of foliage, a hell of a lot has changed in the frog room. I'm going to start out by showing you some of the smaller terrariums on the left hand side of the room. Now not all of these house frogs, some have just got plants and the two on the bottom row haven't been completed yet. So I'm going to start with the one that's just flashed up on your screen there and this one houses my painted reed frogs. These guys are like little tiny coiled springs so whenever I open this terrarium I have to get in and get out pretty fast. There are five of these frogs in this terrarium and you'd think that they'd be easy to spot with their bright colour and patterning like you'll see in a moment, but they are extremely hard to find in this well-grown in terrarium. So I kind of just want to get in and get out. You'll see two of them up there in the corner, but I do not want to run the risk of these guys escaping because trying to catch something that's the size of a thumbnail and then can move like lightning isn't my idea of fun. This terrarium does house mostly common species like the Pilea and the Baby Tears down the bottom, but there is a couple of unusual things in here like the Pyrosia Dragon Scout Fern and the miniature orchid that I've got growing on the bark. If you would like to know what any of the plants are that you're going to be seeing in this video, leave a timestamp down in the comments below and I will get to you with the name of the plant that is there in that area. Right next door to those painted reed frogs, I have three Dendrobates tinctorius azurius, or the common name is azurius poison dart frog. As that name would suggest, these guys are extremely bright neon blue, and you'll notice that the lighting in this terrarium is a little bit dimmer than the other one. That is because at the time of filming this clip in the video was around back in March, April time when I had just got the frogs and they had only been in this terrarium for a couple of days. So when I first introduce frogs to a terrarium, I want to make sure that they have the least stressful transition to that environment possible. So I use a less intense bright light just when I'm introducing those frogs and I'll use these LEDs as lighting for a couple of days to about a week just to make sure that I can minimize as much stress as possible to the animals. Now I think it will come as no surprise to you guys that these frogs are one of my favourite species due to the colour and you will definitely be able to see this colour a lot better in the more up to date footage I'm about to show you in a second. Another reason after keeping them for a while of why they've become one of my favourite species of frogs is because of their extremely bold personalities. Now a lot of my other smaller frogs like this have a very shy retiring kind of nature and they don't really want anything to do with me whereas these guys have no trouble at all coming straight up to the glass and begging for food whenever they see me. This footage you're seeing here of them eating, which they have no trouble doing at all, was filmed a couple of weeks ago and you can really see the bright colour that they are and the fact that these plants in this terrarium have really started to fill in from what they were back in March, April time. And one thing I think I'm going to have to clarify before I get a barrage of comments with everybody going, you're going to kill yourself with having these, is the fact that captive bred poison dart frogs are not actually poisonous. The way it actually works with poison dart frogs is they get their toxins from the insects that they eat. And those insects get those toxins from the plants that they eat. So the poisons and the toxicity of these frogs is passed on through the food chain. Beings as these frogs in captivity have no access to those insects eating those certain types of plants, they do not hold any poisons or toxicity at all. With that being said, these are not an animal that's supposed to be handled every day, they're an animal that's supposed to be looked at, but in the small instances when I have had to touch these frogs, guess what, I'm not dead yet. 
In the next terrarium above that is another species of poison dart frog, and in here is the Dendrobates auratus, or the green and black dart frog. This is also one of my favourably decorated terrariums, purely because of the fact that how much of this ficus has actually grown in at the sides of the coir that I've put against the glass. That is one thing that I'm going to be repeating on a lot of my other terrarium builds in the future. There is two frogs in this terrarium, which I believe to be a male and a female pair. Now these guys, are, from what I've read, are supposed to be a little bit more bold than my ones are. Mine like to hide away in the shadows pretty much all the time whenever they see me, and just come out for food and grab it and then leg it back to their little hiding space. But with that beautiful bright turquoise that they are, it's still not hard to spot them when they're hiding in the shadows. Another little detail which I really like about this tank, which is down to nature, completely not down to me at all, is the fact that the ficus has started to grow through the ventilation lid at the top, and has now produced all of these aerial roots hanging back down into the tank. Now at some point I'm going to have to deal with this, because there is a layer of acrylic I have at the top, so it's kind of like a mini greenhouse up there, and it is eventually going to block the light to the tank, but for now, I love the way that it looks. Now the design of this terrarium, I've just kind of let go wild and do whatever it wants, and the result of that is I've got liverworts, ferns, mosses, all popped up from spores all over this tank. They're like these little moisture-loving plants that I really love, and they're impossible to find like in garden centres and nurseries. They literally just have to appear, so that's something that I really love about this tank, and it's really unique because of that. Now I have also had a certain type of mushroom start to grow in this tank, don't worry, it's not any narcotic or anything like that. But I have found out from Facebook, from some mycologists on there, that this is the second sighting of this fungus slash mushroom that has ever been documented in the UK. And the only other place that this mushroom has ever grown is in Kew Gardens. Now, that's a bit of a humble brag, but I'm pretty proud of that. And thank you to Kaya, or Toxic Tears here on YouTube, for helping me find that out. We'll leave those guys to hide in the shadows, and in the terrarium right next door I have got my Scafirefly Marmorata, which is a mouthful, or the Marble Rain Frog or Green Burrowing Frog. There are two frogs in this terrarium, and you will have seen one of these little guys pop up in my last YouTube video dedicated to my frogs. Now these guys, as that burrowing name suggests, dig themselves right down into the substrate and don't come out very often. So every couple of months I do decide to dig these guys up, stick them in a little shallow dish of water or an empty terrarium filled with a little bit of water, and give them a nice heavy feed. So I will insert some of the footage of the last time I did that for you guys, just so you can see these little ones in action. This terrarium is pretty minimalistic, just to make sure that they haven't got anything in the way of them burying it into the substrate. In the next terrarium, straight up from those guys, I have another species of dark frog, and in here is Dendrobates leucomelis, or the bumblebee dark frog. Now you'll notice just there that the lighting has changed from that first clip, and that is because this tank decided to crash on me for some reason. Nothing absolutely happened wrong with the frogs, there was no detriment to them at all, but a load of the plants in here just decided to die on me for some reason. Um, don't know why that happened, it's not due to overwatering, and there was absolutely nothing wrong with the frogs that are living in here. A load of these plants just decided to die off, so I took that as an instance to change up the lighting that I was using on this terrarium to my more bright lights that I've been using in the other ones. There's three bumblebee dart frogs in this tank, and they are pretty much scared of everything that goes on around them. Um, they don't come out during the day really at all, which is unusual for dart frogs. These little guys only come out when the lights go off, which is very, very unusual, but they've got good weight, they're a good size, they are not got anything wrong with them, they just all decide to push themselves up in that little bit of bogwood that I've got there at the back there, which is hollowed out through the centre. They push themselves in there somehow and stay in there all day. 
I'll insert a couple of photos of these guys when I had them as froglets and they are really the only photos I have of these just because they don't stay around long enough for me to get any snaps of them. As you can see they get the name of being bumblebee dart frogs due to that yellow and black coloration. In the final tank right next door to those guys I don't have any frogs at all. This is just a tank where I've been adding like cuttings and stuff like that to grow out to be replaced into other tanks if anything decides to die on me and it's just kind of an area where I've got little seedlings and ferns growing up just to kind of keep them somewhere safe and in a nice humid environment. To go over some of the plants that I've got in here, I've got some agravia growing up there at the glass at the back. There's some vanilla orchid cuttings in here as well. There is also some little bits of salaginella that I've put down there to grow at the back as well. You'll see that little palm-like thing is known as Actinopterus australis, which is an eyelash fern. They don't do very well for me at all. And there's some other little peperomia seedlings and just little bits and pieces coming up down there as well. There's also a strawberry begonia or saxophage growing there as well. Now moving over to the biggest terrariums in the room and my pride and joys, each one of these exoterras is 45 by 45 by 60 in dimensions and each terrarium houses an individual species of frog. Moving from left to right, this terrarium houses a species of frog I'm pretty sure everybody is familiar with. In here are my red eyed tree frogs. If you've ever seen any wildlife programs to do with the Amazon rainforest or pretty much anything to do with the Amazon at all, I'm sure you've seen these little guys in action. They are an extremely beautiful species of frog that just look like a leaf by daytime and then turn into this beautiful brightly coloured creature by the night. A bit like a dragoon really. At the time this footage has been taken, this terrarium hadn't been planted up for very long, only for a couple of months, so not everything has fully grown in yet, but there is a hell of a lot of nice beautiful plants that are starting to come up in this terrarium. With these larger terrariums, I'm not going to babble over them, I'm just going to let them do the talking for me. You can see the bare bones of how this terrarium was made before it had any plants in it and if you would like to see how I make these backgrounds there is another tutorial on my channel and that will be linked down in the description below. I'm just giving you a nice slow overview of all the plants that are in this terrarium and again if you would like to know the name of a certain one please let me know down in the comments with the timestamp in the video and I will let you know what the plant is. I'm probably going to sound like a stack record by now saying that with almost every terrarium but it's just going to be the easiest way for me to let you know what these plants are without this video being any longer than it already is going to be because it will be hours long with me naming every single one of these plants. Here you can see the two little guys that live in this tank and I'm pretty sure they're both males but due to their red eyes I have a bit of a funny name for both of them. They are called Indica and Sativa for obvious reasons. <laughs> I won't elaborate on that further but <laughs> I think we all know 420. I found these guys on Gumtree of all places when I was actually looking for another 60 tall exoterra. They were not in the best conditions when I got them sadly and thankfully they have bounced back and they are in extremely good health now. Onto the middle terrarium and in here houses probably my rarest or most hard to find species of frog and these are the Rakaforus keo or the black webbed flying frog. I stumbled across these guys when I was looking for a Wallace's flying tree frog which sadly are extremely hard to find in captivity anyway but I found these guys and drove over a hundred miles to get them. Um, you might think that's madness but I really wanted these because they are so unusual and so beautiful. They are very very similar to the Wallace's flying tree frog, they're just ever so slightly smaller and have a little bit of a different in coloration. You will have seen these little guys already in my step by step background tutorial, again linked down below, but now I'm going to let you just enjoy this terrarium for what it is.
moving one step along, in here are my mossy frogs, and you will have seen these in my previous frog tour video as well. These guys are an extremely beautiful and hard to find species of frog with their camouflage, but there are three of them little guys in here, and I love these for the sound that they make. If you want to see what these guys look like in action, go over and check my other frog tour video out, where you will also hear these guys squeaking as well. Yes, frogs that squeak. This terrarium you will see is set up a little bit different from the others. This is more along the lines of a paludarium, which means that the terrarium has a body of water in it. There is a piece of cork bark which has been siliconed into the corner of this terrarium, and then there is a large piece of acrylic which is about 8 to 9 inches high, which I have placed along in a diagonal from the corner of that cork bark to the side of the terrarium. So everywhere where there is plants, the water is kept away from, and then the remaining area is just an open area for water because these frogs are pretty much semi-aquatic. The next two terrariums I'm about to show you, I'm not going to include too much of them in this video because I'm going to save it for another one. The first one is the new terrarium that I've built for my milk frogs and this has only been planted up for about three weeks at the point of me filming this clip. And they are in this brand new 45 by 60 tall, the same as the other three that I've just shown you. This terrarium houses a lot more robust kind of plants because these girls are pretty large and in charge and will flatten any delicate plant that I try to put in here but I've tried my best to get some nice things growing in here and so far it's grown pretty well. And the others that I'm not going to include too much of are my white tree frogs because they are just in this temporary terrarium at the moment because their new one is being built as we speak and it's going to be my largest one yet shall we say. For my final display terrariums, these are 30 by 45 tall exoterras, and I'm going to be starting from the right and working left, and this terrarium houses my Orinoco lime frogs. This is another semi-aquatic species of frog, that's why I've got that little body of water there at the front, just to give them a little bit more water to kind of run away and hide in, because they do dart into that very often, because they are very skittish. They are a really unusual looking frog, with almost like a shovel shaped nose, and their skin looks almost like jelly, they're like almost like little jelly baby frogs, and they have a nice blue iridescent green color to their skin as well that changes quite a lot depending on their mood. As I mentioned they are pretty skittish and there's three little guys in here. Most of the time you'll just see a little frog butt sticking out and then it will disappear. So you don't see them very often during the day so they're very hard to get on camera. They do come out a lot at night time though and they have kind of like a clicking kind of call to their croak. They're a really beautiful frog that I'd love to get more of but sadly are hard to find. Moving to the middle terrarium, and this one houses my crested gecko called Lila. I've had her for a couple of years now, and she's always seemed to be pretty skittish, but in the last couple of months she's tamed up quite well, and doesn't mind too much to me invading her privacy. <laughs> I'm not an expert when it comes to crested gecko morphs, but I do believe that she's a flame harlequin. Crested geckos are pretty active at night, so this terrarium houses some more robust plants that can deal with her mooching around the terrarium. There's some Skindapsis, some Ficus, and some Kangaroo Paw Ferns, as well as just some little sheet moss that I've put in here as well. The final display terrarium here on the left houses my hourglass frogs. For a tiny little species of frog, these guys pack a hell of a lot of personality, and they are a really nice, beautiful, bright yellow colour as well. 
Sadly, I haven't been very lucky with these little guys, and I have lost a couple due to impaction. Sadly, they had managed to eat little bits of sphagnum moss, and it was too much for them to pass. So now I hand feed all of these little tiny frogs with tongs every couple of days to make sure that I minimise anything like that happening again, because I really like this species of frog, and I don't want to run the risk of losing any other little ones like this. Again, I'm just going to mention if you'd like to know any of the species of plants to leave a comment in the timestamp down below. I'm just going to hover over all the ones that are in this tank for you to see them. So if you like anything, let me know down in the comments. Hopefully you're still watching and I'm not bored yet because I know this video is pretty long. Luckily we're on to the final stretch of this video with my final four frogs. Now these guys aren't in display terrariums because they are more burrowing kind of species. And in the first one I'm going to be showing you my female tomato frog. Now this little lady, or should I say big lady, is a monster when it comes to food. And the camera does not do her size justice. She is almost the size of a tennis ball and she eats for England. <laughs> She comes from a captive bred bunch of tomato frogs and I'm pretty sure the guys that had her were glad that she was going, mainly because the fact that she was going to a good home but also because the fact that she was eating everything in the terrarium and the other little siblings didn't stand a chance and it was going to get to the point where she was about to eat her brothers and sisters. The next tub I'm going to show you houses another tomato frog and this is my male. He's a little bit more laid back when it comes to food but is still a pretty good eater by the size of that frog butt. Next up is Lumpy, and I'm pretty sure this little frog is my spirit animal because he doesn't like people at all. You will have seen him in my other frog video where I had him in a terrarium at the time, but he needed a bit more space and more substrate to bury himself into because he spends 90% of his time buried underground waiting for food. And even though there might be food around, if there's still somebody there, he'd rather not deal with them at all. And the final frog in the last tub is my fantasy horn frog called Deku. He also isn't a fan of people, but he's tolerating me a little bit more day by day. Although I just went to feed him about half an hour ago and he is buried underground and the slightest movement to try and get him out to eat made him result in just screaming and squeaking at me. So I think I'll leave him alone. So there you go guys, this has been my long updated <laughs> frog tour video. Now I know this video is pretty much madness and I've been filming this over a couple of months. It's been quite hard to try and wait for plants to grow in or to try and get frogs out when they're active. But I really do hope you enjoyed this guys. If there is any plants as I've mentioned that you like, leave the timestamp and a little description of what it is that it looks like. And I will let you know the species of plants so you can find it from wherever you are in the world. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time. Bye-bye.